Now let's jump to YouTube news. I am going to provide an update to the experiment that we ran last week where I wanted everybody to like the video to see how it impacted distribution, performance, all of that. And as I promised, I said I will open up my analytics to you. And that is exactly what we are going to be doing. If you are just listening, I will try to make this as immersive for you as possible, but I would recommend going over to the YouTube video so you can see all of the graphics that I show. I noticed absolutely no difference in performance from a regular podcast episode and last week's podcast episode. And there was a significant difference in terms of the likes. That's the one thing that was different, the amount of likes and the ratio of likes. We had 337 likes and a 100% like to dislike ratio. That's fantastic. Fantastic. So how did the video perform in comparison to the prior 10 videos? 5 out of 10. 5 out of 10, right smack dab in the middle. That led to 1.3 thousand views, which is right on par. 3.9% click-through rate, which is right on par, and a view duration of 13 and a half minutes, which is actually up. As far as the most liked video on the channel, we did not hit that. As I mentioned, this had 337 likes, which made it the 14th most liked video on the channel. Then I compared the impressions of last week's podcast against the five prior podcasts. And the impressions are all pretty similar between the last six episodes, between 16 and 20,000 impressions. There was one standout there, and that was BSP 345, which ended up with about 26.5 thousand impressions. Higher impressions, also a higher view count. When we compare those two videos across a number of analytics to try to find out why BSP 345 got more impressions and more views than 349. When we look at likes, what is that? 109 likes for BSP 345, 337 on BSP 349. So the video that got significantly more impressions and views had significantly less likes than last week's episode. What about view duration? Because that's really important the actual amount of time somebody watched the episode. Eight and a half minutes for BSP 345, 13.75 minutes for BSP 349. So the view duration on the video that got more impressions and more views was worse than last week's episode. This is making no sense. The analytics are worse for the video that performed better. What about comments? The actual engagement, the interactions between content creator and consumer, because that's all you are. You're not a viewer. You're not a part of our community. You are a consumer. 21 comments on 345. 34 comments on last week's episode. Less engagement on the video that did better in terms of impressions and views. So what about click-through rate? You already know 349 got a 3.9% click-through rate. Episode 345 got 4.9% click-through rate. There we go. We have one analytic that makes a bit of sense. It has a higher click-through rate, therefore higher views, that makes sense, but also higher impressions. It seems like I am completely speculating here. To me, it looks like YouTube is viewing that higher click-through rate as an indication that the video has a greater appeal to more people. So they're going to show it to more people. So click-through rate may actually be kind of important, at least based on this single data set. (laughs) This one video that I am doing this with. And then let's look at subscribers gained. On last week's episode, we gained seven. I think that's pretty successful. But on episode 345, we gained 20. So from this one experiment, from this one data point, I see zero benefit 
from advocating so heavily for likes, for getting a 100% like to dislike ratio, 337 likes on a video with a thousand views, 1300 views. That's about, what would that be? 30% about 25%. That's pretty dang good. That's a pretty dang good like ratio. Zero benefit. Zero that I see. So to me, as I already said, it seems like that click-through rate may be incredibly important in determining if YouTube is going to distribute it to more people. The like button, I saw no benefit. And then maybe the subscriber thing is a good indicator of viewer satisfaction because what would tell YouTube, hey, this is a really satisfying video more than somebody saying, I need more of this. Tell me when more of it is available. So maybe that subscribe thing is really important. We'll have to do that later. We'll test out the subscriber thing on a later episode. But in the meantime, we need to run the second part of this experiment on this week's episode. So I am going to do the thing. Get ready to smash that dislike button. Go ahead and punch that dislike button. Let's make this the most disliked video on this channel. Hate this video. Dislike it. Go ahead and dislike it. That hurt my <coughs> throat. <laughs> the black lung pop. <coughs> Let me know what your thoughts are on this. Was this interesting to you? Seeing all the analytics, I found it very fun diving into this level because I don't go into this level of analytics. I don't bother with it. I don't care about it. But trying to determine what is actually impacting a successful video versus an a par, on par video, an average video, then I'll have to look at a poor performing video, see what the analytics tell me. I found that quite fun. So go ahead and dislike this video. If you're listening to the audio only, go over to YouTube, click the dislike button. Let's see if the negative indicator for satisfaction has an impact. Maybe I'll kill my channel with this. And <laughs> that would be just terrible if I destroyed this channel, but that would be a a good piece of data to have and pass along. Likes are so important. No, dislikes are so important that they will kill your channel. <laughs>